Hi. Okay, it's time for another creature feature. Yeah, and uh, this week we have the Oregon Zoo here. We're so excited to meet Bebedo, the prehensile-tailed porcupine. He's wondering why I don't have any food in my hands. Yeah. Uh, he is here with Ambassador Animal Keeper Bree Winchell. Thank you both for coming in. Absolutely. Yeah. We're happy to be here. This oh is, he's massive. So I, cool. I didn't know he would be this big. And he's actually a fairly small species of porcupine. So mm -hmm. prehensile-tailed porcupines are found in the rainforest, mostly in Brazil, and they live their whole lives up in that rainforest canopy. So it's advantageous to be a little bit smaller. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I love his little nose. He's got like this little snout that is so cute. He definitely <laughs> has an excellent sense of smell to uh, sniff out all those great foods that they eat. Lots of flowers, nuts and seeds in the rainforest. Mm -hmm. His absolute favorite though is of course a peanut. Oh, oh really? Okay. And he's, and he's got some fruit he's stacking on right now. Is that sweet potato like. or what is that? That right now is a golden beet. Oh, he loves his root vegetables. Oh, Yum. I, I love, love beets, beets too, Bebedo. Yeah. yeah. We, should, uh, we should go get lunch <laughs> later. Oh my gosh. So you were just telling us that uh, porcupines, contrary to popular belief, they can't actually shoot their quills. That's a myth? It is a myth, yes. The cartoons have lied to us all. Mm. Okay. Uh, but what they can do is they puff themselves up if they uh, feel threatened by something or startled by a noise, because they're a prey animal. Yeah. Yeah. And then if a predator tried to attack them at that point, are able to release out of their skin on contact, but they can't like whoosh. Yeah, okay, and so, and, but you said we can like pet him, right? He, yeah. Like, like if I were to... Yeah, like, Bebeto is an ambassador yeah. animal. He's, so He's really comfortable yeah. being yeah. with people. His quills are soft. Felt his quills, feel his quills, see. Emily, yeah. Oh, is this, that's so cool. And does he usually eat on two feet like this, or does this mean something? No, he usually leans back and eats because often he likes to hold on to his food with his front feet. Oh. <laughs> Look at him shelling wow. his own peanuts, just like you said. <laughs> you know, his, his feet, he's got these kind of goofy looking feet, and you said that's because they spend most of their time in trees. Exactly. So those feet are perfectly made for him to climb and hold on. And then that long prehensile tail, which is how they get their name, mm -hmm. helps them to wrap around branches or grab. Um, so that they can reach a little bit further to to get to the best foods. Okay, oh, and wow. I imagine people don't. I mean, people have hedgehogs, but people don't have porcupines as pets. I'm assuming. No, um, yeah. absolutely not. They definitely are <laughs> yeah. meant to stay out in nature and mm -hmm. um, do their job, which is to be excellent seed dispersers. So they help fertilize lots of different plants out in the wild um, and move from place to place. Mm -hmm. um, they are definitely not meant to be in our homes. Oh, right. Oh my gosh, it's, <laughs> I, I'm just having so much fun listening to him snack on all this stuff. He's just chewing away. Uh, you know, or Oregon Zoo does such a good job too, you know, through some of your animal ambassadors really like teaching people about the habitats they come from. I would imagine he's in some areas that, you know, face some different threats from deforestation and habitat loss. So tell us a little bit about kind of where, where his species is from. Yeah, so they are found primarily in Brazil, so that tropical rainforest habitat, which of course does face a lot of pressure, a lot of times from the uses that we put on it, that, that the things that we want from that habitat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the ways that we can make a really positive impact for all animals that live in rainforest habitats is really by the choices that we make when we go um, and purchase uh, things at the grocery store every day. So mm -hmm. looking for things like shade-grown coffee, so we're not clear-cutting that rainforest. And that's a lot of what we talk about in our Wild Connections programs, that he is the star of one of those as well. Yeah, cool. and where is that in the zoo, the Wild Connections So program? those uh, programs happen all over the zoo with a lot of different species um, mm -hmm. every day. And you can always purchase tickets at the zoo the day of a program, um, but not all programs happen every day. Um, or you can purchase tickets online in advance. It gives you a great opportunity to meet these animals behind the scenes, close up, and have a really kind of moment to see how amazing they are for, for yourself. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're just Definitely. so cool. Now, I know we're getting into spring, the weather's getting nicer, it is the perfect time to go be outdoors and go to the zoo, and you guys do something cool. Uh, is it second Tuesdays every month, discounted tickets? So that's something families might want to plan for. Yeah, so we have a lot of programs um, to ensure that the zoo is accessible for a lot of people. So between our community free days that we do on a regular basis, as well as our Zoo for All program, we really want to make sure that everyone feels that they can they can come and enjoy the space and, and learn about these amazing people, yeah. uh, amazing creatures that live in their communities. Yeah, yeah. cool. Well, Bree, like thank Bebedo. you so much for bringing in Bebedo Hi. to us. I said that right, right? Bebedo? Bebedo, okay. absolutely. All right, well, you can uh, learn more about Bebedo and other animals. Follow the Oregon Zoo on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, check out our story on coin.com. We're going to let him just keep eating. Yeah, keep, keep doing snacking on those peanuts, yeah. Bebedo. That's great. Okay, we're going to send it over to meteorologist <laughs> Kelly Bayer with Portland's most accurate forecast.